And here it is! A bit of a drum roll, come on! First signing for Coventry City on the whole game so far. The first ever signing of a player we can manage. And it has gone to Andy Ryan, the Scottish striker, 19-year-old youngster. So, unsurprisingly, I've gone with a young player with heap of potential instead of someone who can deliver for us straight away. Good one, idiot. So this guy, Andy Ryan, 19 years of, 19 years of age, from Scotland. He has come from Hamilton, where he appeared 58 times, scoring 7 goals for them, so not too bad. He has the current ability of a decent player of our current division in League 1, but he has the potential get this, the potential to be a good Premier League striker. So that's what we're looking for, a good Premier League striker and with the ability to play okay, a bench player you know, injury, he can come in uh, hopefully that will be enough for him to develop into a good striker but here's our first signing uh, he costs us 700k which is a good chunk of our uh, wage, or good chunk of our transfer budget but I feel, long run time, he will be worth it. So in the month of January, since we are allowed more staff, we have more, we're being allowed to run the club how we want to run it. We have signed a couple of new players. We've got an under 21s coach to add to that. But more importantly, Mike Jeffries, the assistant manager. We have got rid of McFarlane. We released him from his contract, told him to get out here, go get lost somewhere, somewhere in the bush. And we've signed Mike Jeffries. And he is taking over as assistant coach, assistant manager, sorry. And he is just piles better. Piles and piles. Let's just take a quick little look at him. And sure, his staff role ratings aren't the best. He is a manager, primarily. But, and he's American, I know. All you British people will be just loving that. We've signed an American. Bloody great. But, it's not so bad. He's had a decent run as a manager. And you can feel that from his history where he has an MLS title with Chicago Fire, a US Cup uh, title as well, as well as getting the MLS Coach of the Year runner-up in 2002. Sure, that was a while ago, but he's definitely got the ability to help us out. He has excellent judging player ability and potential, and as well as good things like tactical knowledge, working with youngsters, his determination, adaptability, and man management as well. Anything over 10 at this stage is good, compared to McFarlane, who was absolute dirt. So finally, we get one signing done. Of course, there has to be a whole pile more because we just cannot go on for the rest of the season with just one new player who's only a youngster in that matter. But it is still match time to carry on with, and it is against Preston, where we have our next League One match. And Preston, uh, they're going to be a tough nut to crack these guys. The lineup for today... And there's a few players returning to the squad from injury as well. Joe Murphy in goal. We have Blair Adams, Willis, Webster, and of course Cyrus Christ Christie returning on the right side of defence. So although he is a petty, a bit of a petty, what do you call it, complainer, just like Joe Murphy, he is still one of our best players at the club. So he's come in. Lobjewitt combines in midfield with Thomas, Fleck and Baker on the wings, Clark and Manset up front despite their poor performance last week. They've retained their spot today um, at the front. So the reason I say that uh, Preston will be a tough nut to crack is that these guys are in fourth. They're in fourth place and we're away and our form so far this month has been rubbish. We've got one point and Preston are on the attack. Early on, 1-0, Preston goal. Goal for Davies and that really just sums up exactly what I'm saying. 29 minutes in, first highlight of the match and Preston score. The fourth place side looking class above Coventry at the moment. So despite the fact that we have a few players back, we're still not looking very good at all. We're 35 minutes in here and it is another chance here for Preston. They go back for Mill, who goes to Clark. Clark's running forward. Oh, this is just too easy. There's too much room here. Willis heads it wide, but it goes straight to Mill. And again, Clark on the right hand wing crosses again. This time Webster deals with it. Adams tries to clear, but it's gone straight to Keane and Mill. Clark again for a third time. This time it's dwindled in for Davies. 
Oh, someone looked like they wanted to pile drive that one, but it is keen and it is diffused and Coventry survived that little onslaught and Baker's going to counter-attack. He's put the pedal down and he's away. Good ball from Clark. Oh, it's Flick. Flick has to know he can't get it in. And a great save from Rudd. Oh, that had to be a goal. It was a super play, a super pass from Clark, but it couldn't be finished. Here's Flick's corner. And it is headed away from Huntington. Preston right up the top in promotion positions at the moment as another corner comes in. And it's cleared away from the press of defence. Lobdewitt goes back for it. And he combines with Christie. Back in for his first match, straight into the starting team. And he's lost out possession on Keane there. And Keane has just pumped it downfield. And that wraps up the first half. Preston leading 1-0 after the first 45 minutes. And now we're 73 minutes in and it's a free kick. Oh, brilliant from Clark. But what a free kick from Baker. And it's a goal for Coventry. And they tie this back up at one apiece. But what a free kick from Baker. Threading the needle and just the deft touch from Clark. Scoring the goal, 1-1. As we look now, 82 minutes into the match and it's Davies. Just about away and free. Keane's cross is deflected. Adams is dispossessed from Welsh. And now it's forward again for Davies. Free on goal. What a strike from Davies. And Preston regained the lead with an absolute ripper. From Davies. Just put it down. Struck it on a bit of a volley. And finished the job. Coventry now. 92nd minutes and have a free kick. Webster was all over that one like a rash. But couldn't put it away. Rudd makes a fantastic save. And looks like he might save Preston from losing a couple of points. Still playing on. 93rd minute now. Baker. Can he launch some magic? Man says not keen. Oh, Baker's been smashed in a big tackle. And it looks like someone's hurt there for Preston. This match still going on now. Nearing 90. No, oh, it's not now. All over. Preston. Good win. 2-1. And Coventry slumped to another loss in the league. So this is becoming a bit of an issue now because, well, how many losses is that? That's about three in a row in the league. The draw, of course, starting up. So Bristol, Crawley, and now Preston. So not good. Not good at all for the Coventry side. We're thinking maybe it's time for a team talk for the squad and see how they pull up after that. As for the scorers, Kevin Davies. Very good for Preston. Two well-taken goals giving Preston two and of course Leon Clark's deft little touch header giving Coventry the one we look at the ratings and you see the defense Joe Murphy is six Christie is 6.2 back from injury poor Adams 5.4 horrible some good news though coming out Carl Baker 7.4 Fleck 5.8 shocking Leon Clark 7.1 thanks to his goal it is on the other side no surprise Kevin Davies 8.8 .8, getting man of the match once again we look at the stats shots 10 on target 3 what are you talking about Coventry City what is going on here we look so good in December and November now it's come tumbling apart and 3 shots on target in 90 minutes of football doing alright with position keeping up with that but we are looking poor and we need to have a firm talk with these players so while the rest of the players are getting a firm grilling from Tony Owens why not go over a new signing at the club whoa number two and of course with the departure well no no I take that back with the seemingly near departure of Joe Murphy we have to get another keeper because we sold Lee Burge like months ago and it's really no one else is about. We have a decent keepers in the under 18s, but they are on loan, and that's just that's just a massive target. So instead, we've looked to the transfer market, and we haven't got something exactly what we wanted, but we've got a decent young player in Robbie Thompson. Here's a 20-year-old, another Scott as well, which uh, will make some of you happy, I guess. But it is his potential once again. Yeah, I know. I've gone for the potential players. And not the current ability, I know. I'm a sucker for a young guy who can play awesome in the future. So we, we didn't get the guy that we wanted who was awesome and had great 
potential ability, uh, he had great current ability, and instead for the youngster with good potential. Of course, he has four and a half star potential, which according to our scouts and staff, is again another premiership quality player if he gets to his potential. But you have to think with Murphy supposedly wanting to leave, and yes, we are offering him out to clubs, so no one is interested in him, so it's his own bloody fault. Um, this guy looks ready to take the reins for at least the rest of the season. And on top of that, he only cost us 375 k which, you know, goalkeepers aren't cheap. And for a man of that potential, that, that's a good price, I feel. He was a good buy, and we're pretty happy with him at the club. So nearing the end of the month now, we've only got a couple of games to go, and with only two real signings, well, there's going to have to be some very rash deals done pretty soon. Of course, if you've played FM 13 or 14, I think they've introduced it last year, there is a transfer deadline day, which in the end is the big time target if we don't get anything wrapped up too much before then. But the matches crack on, and we are at home against Carlisle for this League One match. So the team for today, of course, Robbie Thompson. He's biffed straight in the fire. Robbie Thompson to start in goal, number 21, and his line of defence in front of him will be Adams, Willis, Clark, and Christie. So no Webster. He's getting a rest, and Thompson will make his debut. Midfield for Leon Lobjewitt and Connor Thomas. The two youngsters are making a good fist of things at the moment. Fleck and Baker will carry on on the wings, but it is Cullen Wilson who finally makes a return to a Coventry jumper. He replaces Manset and will accompany Leon Clark in the front row. So, big changes, players back from injury. This is exciting stuff now for Coventry. Let's see how we go against Carlisle. And of course we are back at home, which is outstanding and not the best crowd though today. 1,764 is a bit below par. I talked about our last home match, something over 2K is really what we expect, but what can you do? We're on the attack very early on though, through Fleck. This could be a good chance to open the scoring, Fleck. Put wide, Gillespie, a great save, will give us a corner. So Carlisle, they are oh, 13th at the moment. So playing around that top 10 once again as Fleck's corner comes in, looking for Jordan Clark. But Gillespie climbs high and claims it, and that is us for the first half. Well, isn't that interesting? No highlights. Well, just a one, no goals. Here's Murphy now with a corner. Oh, not a corner, a free kick, but off the head of Miller. And Miller scores for Carlisle. And they lead 1-0 in the 58th minute. So, the Carlisle side, 13th. Oh, as he comes a corner for Flick. Oh, brilliantly put away from Barton. And Flick and Barton combining from the corner, a goal for Coventry, and we're all tied up at one apiece. Here's Murphy now, corner for Carlisle. His goals are plenty at the moment, that's what a strike! The man running from deep is Livesley. Oh, that is not how you say his name. What an outstanding goal for Carlisle. They now lead 2-1. to one. Now here's Fleck, another set piece. Willis can't put away. Second half. Goal for Coventry City. Tied up at 2-2. 86 minutes gone. Hits goals are plenty here in the second half. 88th minute, Fleck free kick. Hits the wall. Goes back to Fleck. So it's all tied up at two apiece here. Willis. Crosses in, looking for Barton, falls for Lobjewitt, off the pole for Leon Lobjewitt! Could have been an outstanding winner from the youngster, but he couldn't finish it. The crowd are getting value for money, here's another corner coming in, miss! Oh, driving shot from the back, no, it's volleying around inside the goal box. But it's gone out for another corner. Heavy pressure here from Coventry, 2-2, Fleck! Puts it in, looks for Barton, can't find it. And it is diffused again, 92nd minute now. Throw in. Oh, and it's all over, 2-2, an exciting draw. And what an outstanding match that was from these two sides. Coventry and Carlisle take a bell. That was excitement plus from both teams involved. As the result stands, 2-2. Coventry take the one point, which puts them up to 28 points. 
They stay in 21st after the loss to Preston and they will be, well, very disappointed. What can you say? Very disappointed because they are now back in the relegation zone. So two goals, Barton and Willis getting one apiece. Of course, Connor Thomas and Jordan Clark picked up a yellow card, which is kind of unlike the way we play. The stats, a bit more like it here, a lot more like it, to be honest. 26 shots, 15 on target, and 47% possession. That's down a touch, but the closer to 50, the better. But the shots is what is really good. Carlisle, on the other hand, 22 and 8. They'll be disappointed with that. I would be if that was Coventry. In defence, again, we looked a bit shaky. Jordan Clark is in a horrible run of form, but the lack of depth in defence is really catching us out here. Willis played well, getting a 7.1, and John Flick accompanied him with a 7.5. As on the other side, there was a few 7s going on there, and, well, Carlisle on the day should have won that match, but Coventry fought well to, to save a point, really, and get them up to 28 points with one match to go in this month. And the signings are starting to come in thick and fast now as we have a Latvian joining the ranks here at Coventry City. It is Maximenko, the defender, because, yes, like we're saying, Jordan Clark's playing horribly. So we need some depth in the defence, and it is the man from Latvia with 10 appearances for the national side. The 23-year-old, that is exceptional ability for him. So again, yeah, I know, we've gone for the potential and Maximenko will hopefully fill that hole and hopefully with a bit of rotation in the first team develop into a good player again here's another player we've got who is potential ability to be a premiership player and has already played at quite a number of English clubs so far so hopefully we can keep him around for a while and he'll develop well our third signing of the transfer window so far and he only cost a paltry 75k, which is outstanding. And a bit of a new look at the team of the week for the 21st to the 27th of January. It finds John Flick sitting out there on the left wing to accompany a whole lot of players from Notts County. But it is good to see Flick still putting up the performances and still getting recognised as one of the top players in the league. So we head into our final league match of the month. And this one... Well, this one will be the last before the excitement begins of the transfer deadline day. So, well, I'm, I'm hoping we can wrap up with a few signings just to finish the squad off for the rest of the season. And after that, it's just going to be interesting to see where we end up. So the squad for today, Robbie Thompson, after conceding two on debut, is back in goal again. This time his defensive line is strengthened slightly with the return of Webster in central defence. So it's going to be Adams, Willis, Webster and Christie along the back. Thomas and Lobjewitz swap sides but still stay in midfield. Fleck and Baker on the left and right and it will be Clark and Cullen Wilson to keep their spots despite Cullen Wilson's first match back not being his best but he's a quality player and up against him is Leighton Orient for the final match of January. So Coventry have the task here, an away match against Orient if they can possibly score some points here and finish the month back up where they started it, out of the relegation zone. But of course, like always, their task is made difficult. Up against them, Orient are in eighth spot. So straight away it's a tough match against another side up near that top ten. An away match as well, doesn't make any things, things any easier. And as Orient on the attack very early on, a big cross coming in, but Robbie Thompson makes a good effort of it, climbing high to pluck it from the skies before any Orient players could get involved there. And he thumps it downfield. What a massive kick from Thompson. It put Baker in a magnificent position. Cross comes in for Wilson. But a good save from Jones. Wow, what a play from Robbie Thompson. What a launched ball. This ball is flying out there today, folks. It is going absolutely everywhere. Lobjewitt holds it up and fires it back to Thompson, who pumps it way downfield. Thomas ends up with the ball, and he holds it up. Looks to the left for Fleck. Leon Clark. Oh, there's a man on the run. It's Wilson. Wilson's surely offside. Oh, the shot's gone wide by a whisker. He was onside too, which is amazing. The long throw in here for Orient. Popped over the top. It's a goal mouth jumble. But Robbie Thompson makes a good fist of things and saves the shot. 
that was bouncing around the goal mouth for far too long for Coventry players to be excited for. Here's Wilson though, gets a nice header from Clark. Wilson with the chance, but a good save from Jones. Parries it away. Wilson still on the ball, leaves it alone for Lobjewitt. Right in front of goal, gives it left to Adams. Adams comes forward, looks to get up to the byline. Two defenders on him here, crosses, it goes backwards. Lobjewitt, oh, heavy hit on Lobjewitt, and that is a heavy tackle. And it's intercepted, the pass, Halliday's away for Orient. He's got two men with him, but chooses to hold the ball up and wait on it. Now he plays his through ball, it's a nice one too, but Willis deals with it and diffuses yet another attack from the men in red. Troppy Thompson is getting some massive air on these balls. Baker comes with Lobjewitt, puts a through ball nicely for Wilson, who goes for Clark. Oh, he can't put it away. And that is through three one-on-one -on -one chances that Coventry have butchered. And that'll disappoint the striking coaches because they're creating the chances here, Coventry, but they're not finishing at all too well. Here's Orient again. Well, good ball in, but it's... Oh, it's come away. How's that popped out for the Orient player? He smashed it against the post. And Halliday comes away with it on the left. What the hell happened there? There was a crunching tackle. There was players flying everywhere. The ball come free and the shot was loose. Sawyer eventually gets it and he goes back to Clark. Orient waiting patiently for the chance to break the line. The cross comes in and Willis smacks it away. And that was all just first half highlights. What an exciting matchup we have. The ball goes long and we're still tied up at nil-nil. Orient with the ball. Free kick, long free kick. Oh, cross goal, brilliant shot. That was outstanding from Clark. And he gets the outstretched arm from Robbie Thompson to miss the ball. And just manages to keep it away in the bottom corner. That was an immaculate free kick play. 1-0, Leighton Orient lead. And we are in the 62nd minute now. Manset on the field. Fleck with the ball on the left, goes back to Thomas, who looks forward for Leon Clark. Oh, Manset's running free. Good fall. Oh, good ball for Fleck. Can he get it away? Oh, Manset has to score. No! Great defence. And that ball is being chipped away. That is an outstanding sliding tackle save. That is all that has saved Dorian from conceding. Robbie Thompson's goal kick goes down to Thomas and Lobjewitt. Now again it's Manset waiting for Fleck to run now. He puts the ball through, draws it. Raw oh, Fleck has scored a screamer. And Coventry find themselves back in the game and 1-1 after 66 minutes. And that is what they needed full time though and 1-1 will be the final score. Such a shame neither side could really push forward for a final chance there in those dying 20 minutes. But 1-1 the end score stays. And with that result Coventry stay in 21st spot with 29 points now. And there is the slight uh, poor news to come out of this is with the injury to Christie. And that is going to be a bit of a blow as he will miss a few matches now. So other news from the match, of course, 1-1, one, one, one point for Coventry. And the stats from that game, see a few players getting into the sevens like Fleck, Lobjewitt again. How, man, he's been outstanding in these last couple months. months. Willis and Webster also getting sevens. Robbie Thompson with a 6.7. He's coming into his work quite nicely. The stats, see Coventry get 55% of the ball, 14 shots and 7 on target, which compared to Leighton Orient isn't a bad effort, and they'll take their one point, but they really need to start getting that winning streak back on and confirm their position outside of relegation. And yes, following that match, Cyrus Christie has, is out, and he's due for a spell on the sidelines with a twisted ankle, so the initial reports say 3 to 4 weeks, but it is going to be interesting at how the defence will cover that loss, but it is transfer deadline day tomorrow, don't forget it, and it's one day to go in the month. Transfer deadline day, replacement for Christie maybe. Will Christie even still be here at the end of transfer deadline day? Even Joe Murphy for that matter. Some funny things happen in these transfer windows, but just as it kicked off, 
we got a well a couple of odd news announcements. Cyrus Christie has said he wants to go off the transfer list, so he wants to stay now, which will gladly accept that, and he's happy to negotiate a new contract. So because he's so greedy, he's wanted more than we can initially offer at this stage. So as he is an important player of the club, I've decided to try out the uh, ask board, uh, the board to contract negotiate with Cyrus Christie because I obviously can't offer him what he wants he's important I'll let them do it so there'll be more on that with Cyrus Christie in next month's review obviously whether he negotiates something with the board or not I'm unsure at this stage also another odd news announcement is that Fleck now wants to say John Fleck wants off the list and he wants to stay at the club no worries John no bloody worries it's good to have you sticking around Okay, it's transfer deadline day and it's time to start finalising some shit for the coming seasons. And first up, we have another defender because we're really tight and this last month has really showed me that we need some more depth in defence. So we have signed Luca Gasparato. He is a Canadian and he is 18. So once again, I know, slap me with a wet fish, but I've signed another youngster with massive potential. The way we're going though, these guys are all going to play because we seem to injure players and need players rested all the time which is what the thing is with top flight football so depth in the squad is important and this guy only costs us 75k so another bargain and another player who is um, capable of getting to that premiership level here we got him from Rangers and 75k yeah that's a steal then next cab off the rank is Sam, Sam Mantum he is a central midfielder another youngster 21 but this guy can play already he is equally as good as all midfielders we have now so Barton our best midfielder by you know assistant manager kind of rating report thing that you can get he is the best rated midfielder in the squad so he is just as good equally capable and he is capable of even more being only 21 so it is good to get him he costs just 110k which is another steal coming from Warsaw he is a fellow league one player which is good to have him he'll booster up our midfield ranks quite nicely so now we're starting to get some players with a bit of experience a 27 year old gary dicker so this guy i i wasn't really interested again he's about the same level as barton and mantum he's similar kind of player as those guys but the thing that really sold me with him was we got him for 10k ten thousand pounds that is a bargain considering what we paid for the other guys. He is not the highest wage player. He's good. We got him from uh, Rockdale, who's from Brighton, Stockport. He's experienced and he's good now. And he is a nice midfielder. We are really stocked up for midfielders now. The Irishman will be a very nice addition to the team. So with a few transfers coming into the club, I decided maybe we could get a decent man on loan just to top us off quite nicely. And here is a player who a few of you might already know about Rudy Gisted. so a name that's quite hard to say but due to my research I hope I haven't hashed it up too much Rudy is joining us nicely from Sheffield United he is on loan until the end of the season and is well, our, our best striker right now he is still injured as we loaned him but in a few weeks he'll be back and it'll be interesting to see how he goes for the rest of the season he is a good player and from what I've seen a very popular player as well and finish things off with another midfielder although it didn't seem like we were low on midfielders it's because they never really got injured our defenders were getting injured left right and center but our midfield really rotated between three players with Barton, Lobjewitt and Connor Thomas filling the roles up nicely and if we needed them in a stretch, a stretch we had Musa to come in as well so really four midfielders wasn't really enough so Connor Henderson, an adequate player to come in on another loan till the end of the season, had playing time of Arsenal, Hull, Chesterfield as well. So a capable player, 22, and it'll be a backup role, but it's good to have depth because we don't want to go to those under 18s anymore. So that rounds out our transfers for the January transfer window. We had a, a massive flurry going on in transfer deadline day, signing no more than what five players in that day as well as the three we signed earlier. So we have Andy Ryan, the striker. Robbie Thompson, the goalkeeper. Maximenko, the defender, along with his Canadian friend, Luca Gasparato from Rangers. So these guys, you can see the value there. Sam Mantom, Gary Dicker, 
Rudy Gestet and Connor, Connor Henderson as a bit of a backup midfielder. Spent a total of 1.32 million getting in eight players, all from clubs as well. No free transfer rubbish. We're going for quality, and that is, I think, eight players to boost the squad will see us nicely out of the rest of the season. As you can see on the right-hand side as well, a pile of players going out and loan from the um, reserves and under-18s, which is awesome for these guys to get experience as well. And with that wraps up the review of January. We can look back and see our star man for the month of January. And it has to go to Leon Lobjewitt. Not for a particular performance, but just for consistency. Throughout this whole month, seven games, he has been sevens the whole way through. 6.9s, 7.2s, whatever, stuff like that. He has been Mr. Consistent, Mr. Accuracy, and he has really held together a midfield and delivered opportunities for strikers, which you have to say, going on our goal scoring from this month has been very good. So he has been awesome, and in a month where we've performed very poorly, no player has been as good or as consistent all month, and he stands out alone by himself, Leon Lobjewitt, Man of the Month for January. And finally, before we wrap things up, it is the league table where Coventry now sit in 21st spot, from 29 games so we have done a good half of the season now and we have 10 wins 9 draws and 10 losses that's not bad when you consider if we didn't have that 10 point penalty I know I say it every bloody month we'd be on 39 points which would sit us nicely in 12th spot alongside Rotherham so that's that's pleasing I guess a good record our goal difference of plus 8 is still very good and well I feel we're capable now with the addition of those players that bolster the squad, give us some depth, we won't be so tired, we won't be so down, and uh, well, 2014, could see Coventry scream up that table. At the other end, Wolves and Preston are up at first and second, of course, two of the best teams in the competition, whereas from there on down, fourth place, Peterborough, it's just, it's just a mess down there, there's just one or two points separating a whole host of, play, a whole host of teams throughout that table and to wrap things up is a look at what has been and what will come so the good months of December and November have been just ruined from a horrible January the players concerned about incoming transfers the staff more concerned about the transfers than the team I don't know what to put it on but we were pretty poor we were pretty hit hard we were pretty hard hit from injuries as well as tiredness seven games over December, you make excuses, but it was just a poor month. We scored a lot of goals. That 4-5 loss to Wigan, they're something to be happy with scoring four goals against them. But we scored a lot, and we never lost all, all month by more than one goal, which is quite amazing. We 4-5 to Wigan, 1-2, 3-2, 1-2. So, you know, we didn't get smashed at all. We were there or thereabouts, but we need to take that next step up. As we look forward to February now, we have Walsall first. Crawley once again in the first leg of the Johnson Paint Trophy semi-final south. And then we have them again a couple of games later on the 19th. So we have Crawley, Notts County, Bradford. Crawley again in the second leg, which is at home. And we can wrap it up with Tranmere and Shrewsbury Town at the end. So that is it for February. That is what we have coming up. January is all wrapped up. We have a whole host of players and I expect to see you stick around for next time when we can see these guys in action on the field for Coventry City FC. Until then, thank you all for watching. Hope you're enjoying the series, and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.